Welcome to World Med School. My name is François Nosten and I am Professor of Tropical Medicine at Oxford University. In this micro lecture, I will speak about the treatment of uncomplicated malaria due to Plasmodium falciparum or Plasmodium vivax. And on this slide, the map shows the uh, geographic distribution of the two malaria species. There are some important points to consider when discussing the treatment of uncomplicated malaria. For patients with Plasmodium falciparum infection, it is important to see them early, uh, if possible within 48 hours of the fever onset, in order to prevent the evolution to severe infections and also to prevent the transmission of the disease by reducing the gametocyte carriage. The gametocytes are the sexual form of the parasite responsible for the transmission of the disease. The diagnosis should be confirmed by a biological test, either by microscopic examination of the peripheral blood or by rapid diagnostic tests. The treatment must be with an artemisinin-based combination therapy or ACT. The aim of the treatment is to obtain a complete parasitological cure as opposed to uh, a clinical improvement. We will also use this uh, strategy to prevent resistance by using drug in combination, uh, using quality insured uh, medicines, and by promoting good adherence uh, to the treatment and an optimum dosing. We will use these antimalarial drugs only in patients with a confirmed biological diagnosis. And finally, in area of low transmission, we will also prevent resistance by interruption of transmission. The most comprehensive document on the treatment of uncomplicated malaria is the WHO treatment guidelines. These guidelines are evidence-based and they are updated regularly. They recommend the artemisinin combination therapy to be used as first-line treatment and also to use fixed combinations as opposed to blister packs or loose tablets. The first-line treatment used should be capable of achieving para complete parasitological cure in over 95% of the patients. The treatment policy should change if the cure rate falls below 90%. There are some basic pharmacokinetics and ph pharmacodynamics properties of the antimalarials that are important to know. And this is because the dispositions of the drugs in the human body are essential determinants for their efficacy, for example, the absorption of the drug or its elimination. The effect of the drugs on the parasite uh, is important in the treatment of malaria is the parasite killing rate. This is measured by the parasite reduction ratio at 48 hours, PRR. The PRR measures the parasite reduction ratio every 48 hours, that is one parasite cycle. The graph on the right of hands of the slide shows different antimalarial drugs have different speed of action on the parasites. The fastest of all the antimalarial drugs are the artemisinin derivative. They have a PRR of 10 to the fourth. This means that every 48 hours, the number of parasites will, will be reduced by a factor of 10,000. In the middle of the graph, Drugs such as quinine, SP or Fanzidar, mefloquine have a PRR between 100 and 1000. On the right hand side are the antibiotics. These drugs such as tetracycline or clindamycin are slow killing drugs. They have a PRR of 10, which means that they, should, they would have to be given for between 3 and 4 weeks before the last parasite is being killed. Please note that when the number of parasites is below 10 to the 8th, it will not be detectable by microscopic examination of the peripheral blood because it is under the detection limit. This slide shows the relation between the pharmacokinetics of the drug and the effect on uh, the parasite. This, the drug in, in this slide can be, for example, mefloquine or piperaquine, which are two uh, partners of the artemisinin derivative used in ACTs. The drug concentration profile of the drug is uh, shown in the dotted line. The black line shows what happens if a patient presents with a low parasitemia just above the, the detection limit. 
and the peripheral bl blood smear of this patient will uh, become negative quickly, but the last parasite will be eliminated uh, between the second and the third week. In, on the red line, we show the, uh, the same profile, but for a patient presenting with a much higher initial parasitemia. At between two and three weeks, the concentration of the drugs has fallen, and the effect on the parasite is reduced, as illustrated in the small insert in the middle of the graph, which shows the um, concentration-effect relationship. The multiplication rate of the parasite becomes 1. Then, as the drug concentration continues to decline, the parasitemia uh, starts to re-expand and will re-emerge above the detection limit at around 6 weeks. This illustrate and explain why in, in trials that are conducted to assess the efficacy of a treatment, the duration of the follow-up period is sometimes longer than 28 days, depending on the half-life or the elimination rate of the partner drug. So using all the information above, this slide summarizes the rationale for the artemisinin combination therapy. The elimination profile of the partner drug is shown in the red dotted line. If we use an artemisinin derivative with a high parasite reduction ratio, the total parasite uh, biomass is uh, declining quickly under the detection limit, and around one week, the uh, residual parasite biomass B is exposed to high concentration of the partner drug. But if we don't use an artemisinin derivative, the decline of the parasite biomass is slower, and around the second week, the, um, the residual parasite biomass B1 is exposed to much lower concentration of the partner drug, making it more likely that some of those parasites will survive and will re-emerge uh, into a recrudescent infection a few weeks later. This slide shows uh, the available treatments. On the left-hand side, the uh, artemisinin combination therapy. All these uh, different treatments have in common an artemisinin derivative, either artemether, artesunate, or dihydroartemisinin. They differ by the partner drug, and the partner drugs with the longest uh, elimination half-life that will provide the, the longest post-treatment prophylactic effects are mefloquine and piperaquine. The right-hand side shows the known ACTs that are sometimes used. Quinine uh, is still effective but needs to be given over uh, seven days. Atovacon proguanil is uh, uh, effective but very expensive. Sulfadoxin perimetamine or fanzidar should not be used as a monotherapy because of resistance. Allofantrin should not be used because of the high risk of cardiotoxicity. And finally, the two antibiotics, tetracyclines and clindamycins, are sometimes used in combination with quinine or artesunate in seven-day treatment. Drugs that are in the pipeline, ferroquine is a chloroquine analog under development, artemisinin and naftoquine it's a fixed combination ACT, but it's not been made a good manufacturing practices and uh, should be further evaluated. Artemisin and OZ439 are two semi-synthetic artemisinin derivative under development. And KAE609 and KAF156 are two new families of antimalarial drugs showing uh, promising uh, efficacy and safety, and they are both in phase two clinical trials. So the main three ACTs in use in the world today are shown in the, on this slide, uh, including the total dose of each partner, uh, each component of the ACTs. But it should be noted that this dosing will probably be modified in some particular group of patients, such as young children and pregnant women, who are often underdosed. And uh, recently, the WHO has uh, added a recommendation to use a, a single low dose of primaquine to the three days regimens uh, for plasmodium falciparum uncomplicated infections in order to further reduce the gametocyte carriage rate. So this approach of early detection and treatment with an ACT for uncomplicated P. falciparum infections 
is designed to combat the spread of antimalarial drug resistance. The slide shows here the, the extent of resistance to chloroquine and to sulfadoxine pyrimethamine in the uh, tropics. This slide shows the vicious circle induced by resistance in uh, the malaria parasite to antimalarial drugs and resulting in higher uh, morbidity and mortality in the communities. The early detection and treatment with uh, artemisinin in combination therapy is really aimed at breaking this vicious circle. Obviously, the emergence of artemisinin resistance in Plasmodium falciparum is a serious concern. It emerged in Southeast Asia and it manifests itself by a slow parasite clearance time, as illustrated in the graph comparing two sites, one in eastern Cambodia and one in western Thailand in 2009. And more recently, the WHO has published a map uh, showing the area of Southeast Asia where artemisinin resistance has been documented. Obviously, if this resistance was to spread beyond Southeast Asia, it will be a serious concern uh, because it will compromise the efficacy of all artemisinin combination therapies. This slide shows the summary of the recommendation for the treatment of uncomplicated P. falciparum malaria by using an ACT, preferably quality insured, respecting the contraindication and encouraging adherence to treatment. For recrudescent infections, the choice is between using a different ACT or uh, a combination of quinine with an antibiotic for seven days or artesanate plus an antibiotic for seven days. And as stated above, we add a primaquine low dose, single dose, uh, to eliminate uh, the remaining gametocytes. For the treatment of Plasmodium vivax, chloroquine and amodiaquine will be effective in most of the world and in some areas where chloroquine resistance has emerged, ACTs will be effective. The radical cure for Plasmodium vivax uh, will require a longer course of primaquine or a single dose of tafegranofenoquine, which is still under development. However, these drugs uh, require testing for G6PD deficiencies because uh, they can cause hemolysis in people with this uh, red blood cells inherited disorder. Finally, particular attention is required in special group of patients with malaria, young infants because they are more likely to develop severe infections and are often underdosed, pregnant women because they are more susceptible to malaria, they are also more likely to develop complications and malaria is detrimental for the fetus. And finally, in travelers because they are usually non-immune and they are at risk of severe complication, usually because of a delayed diagnosis. Thank you for studying at World Med School.